I was gonna say, I think we got Mr. Morrison in the house. Yes. Yes, you do. And let's see, we got Mr. Elliot. Oh, there we. There we go. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see. I believe we've got Jeff joining us as well. Yes, you do. Awesome. And we just got to find Kelly. I'm here. Awesome. Um, I think this was going to be our, our panel. Unless there was somebody else I missed or I couldn't remember. I think I think it was our main our main group. Uh, Michael Yuri, of course, but he had to back mm -hmm. out, unfortunately, because of uh, the accident. For, for folks who have been asking, Michael had a accident during the week. He was going out walking with his wife, uh, tripped over some uneven pavement, and basically screwed up his knee and his elbow and his shoulder. So mm -hmm. basically the entire right side, I think, is incapacitated at this point. So. But he sends his best. He wanted me to tell everybody to thank you again for the invite. He's hoping to do this again at some point. But for now, he's just having to kind of take it easy, so I understand. I was going to say, we're going to get started, because uh, like I said, I know we're pushed back a little bit, but we wanted to give Jack um, the full hour, because I know we had everybody had questions for him, and everybody wanted to talk to him, and that was cool. Um, this, is, uh, this actually is very appropriate, since uh, we're kind of wrapping things up, except for the lobby party tonight. Um, and Charlie, Dan. Yeah. Charlie's next. Oh, we got we cutting Charlie's hair tutorials hair. after that. Hair tutorial. Charlie's hair. Yeah. I apologize. No, I'm sorry. I didn't. I did not see okay, the other. Other than that. that other than that. Okay, Charlie's hair is a star. You be watching it, Dan, or you'll never Charlie's work in this town again. I I'm <laughs> not in town anyway, so I'm working in Burlington. <laughs> <laughs> is he going on at six at at uh, at six? Um, oh, yeah, six year time. Yes. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, no. then we'll, we'll go and keep it short, then we'll just go and do the 40 minutes thing. And that's, that's all. Uh, the topic of the panel is why the world needs Superman now. And I think just from what I saw this weekend, I think we need not so much Superman, but everything Superman embodies, which is kindness, hope. Strength of character, strength of will that um, I, I have seen expressed here, the, the sense of friendship that I have seen expressed between the folks that have come together over the Superman days. Uh, as I told people, I, um, I intended on coming this year for the first time, and this is, of course, like I said, 2020 hit and everything went kablooey. But I'm still glad I got a chance to do this because, like I said, it's been a great experience. I've enjoyed it very much, and uh, I've I've loved getting to meet so many new people. It's been awesome. But again, this is why I think we need a character like Superman. We need a character to inspire us to to be the better people that we know we want to be. And I think that's my take on it, at least. And I'd be curious to see what everyone what else thinks. Uh, Kelly, I'm I'm old fashioned, so ladies first. Uh, what do you think? All right. Uh, well, first of all, I think Superman is a story with many facets. Uh, it's a story of a man without a home who finds a home. So it's a story. It's an adoption story. It's an immigrant story. It's a story of a man who is the last of his kind who loses his culture. But it's also the story of a man who grows up in the middle of Kansas and is raised with those Kansas values. And it's the story of it's the story of parental love and the sacrifices that parents make and how Jarrell and Laura sacrifice everything to give their son on the hope that they were giving their son a man. And it's a story of how Martha and Jonathan could not have children biologically, but were every bit Clark's parents. So it's a story of it really, and a lot of times people will call adoptive parents, like, so refer to them as not real parents, and that's bull. <laughs> I mean, very, very clearly not. 
And so it's a really, really strong story about this character. And um, there's a lot. You don't get more nuanced as far as adoption stories go than the Superman story. Because it's a story about a character who really seeks out his roots, but also honors the heritage given him by his adoptive parents and his raising. And Superman is who he is because of the sacrifice his biological parents made and because of the society he came from and the um, the Kryptonian values, but also because of those Kansas values and the love that Jonathan and Martha raised him with and the values they raised him with. And that's an incredibly nuanced story and just an incredibly inspiring story. And his whole, unlike a lot of heroes, a lot of heroes, their story begins when they experience great tragedy. Superman's story is not, even though, yes, okay, his story begins with his planet blowing up, but his story is not rooted in tragedy, it's rooted in love. His story is all about the love of his parents, both sets of parents, and he comes from love. He comes from love and really strong middle American values, and you don't see a lot of heroes that come from that. You see a lot of heroes, especially now. You see a lot of heroes that come from um, that come from darkness, come from pain, and that's you know those are valuable stories too. But this is a hero that comes from love, and he comes from a place of hope and a place of belief that he looks at people and he sees the very best that people can be, and that's because of what he saw growing up in his adoptive parents and the people of small town Kansas. And then he's this character who's a reporter, which reporters aren't very popular right now, but I think we need him even more because reporters stand for someone who seeks out, seeks to uncover the truth and bring the truth to light. So even as Clark Kent persona, he's still seeking to save the world. And he, um, he has the powers of a god, but he recognizes that it's not about the powers that make, like, he basically sees that it's not about the powers that makes you a hero. It's about what your heart says. And it's, he has the powers of a god, and he could rule us, but he chooses to extend a hand in love and kindness. And I think really need that now because so many people are all about so much violence in the world. I mean, there's always been violence, but so many people think violence is the answer and don't seek to understand other people and look for the best in other people. And that's what Superman has always done. And he fights for people because he sees what people can do. And he fights to be seen as a symbol of hope and a symbol of the very best that humans are capable of and just to show people to lead the way, basically. So, yeah, that's that's why the world needs Superman. <laughs> even now, even when it's apparently hard to make a good Superman movie, which that's a whole a whole topic I could go on a rant about, but I won't I won't take up our whole hour. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna be very controversial and I will say that they've made several really great Superman movies recently, but they were all called Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> there were some good animated movies recently too. But, the, but, I, but I, yeah. I, I think Marvel proved you can do a character that's a little old fashioned, that the character is going to call someone out for using profanity and still make him very cool. I and agree. Um, I agree. Well, I was going to say, I, I see Jeff on my screen uh, right above you, Kelly. So, Jeff, how about you? Tell us what you think, my friend. Well, we not only need uh, Superman is a representation. He's like a touchstone. It doesn't have to be Kal-El. It doesn't have to be Clark. Uh, it doesn't have to, the character does not have to wear the iconic red, yellow, and blue. 
but what the world needs right now is focus and it needs positive focus. It needs focus on what can be accomplished when there's more kindness in the world, when there's more uh, positive energy in the world, when uh, it's not about greed or about um, self all the time in a negative way. It's not about anger. It's not about hate. It's not about prejudice. It's, we need a hero. We de desperately need a hero, but a hero who would be a, an iconic focal point, something that all of us can focus on in a positive way. And you don't need the, uh, the powers of Superman necessarily. What we do need is someone who is through all of the chaos, able to break through all the uh, noise and chatter of uh, what we see on the news and what we hear uh, in uh, some of the chat rooms of social media, which uh, can be very negative. And uh, during this virtual convention, we've had to deal with one or two people who uh, really took something that was wonderful and put their own wrong stamp on it. And we need, we need a, a positive focus point in this day and age. And looking at the movies that have come out recently, as opposed to the movies that came out during Chris Reeves, Superman uh, time, we are going farther and farther away from the innocence and naivete of the 50s and 60s and, and 70s. And it's, there's a lot more anger in the world today, a lot more cynicism, a lot more um, children who have a shorter childhood than they used to. There, there's something wonderful about being a child for as long as you possibly can. But kids growing up, they've grown up a lot faster than they used to, especially when I was a kid. And it's, it's sad because during that childhood, that, that's a learning experience. And depending upon what kind of a childhood you have, that is what you take with you the rest of your life as a foundation. It would be nice to be able to reach out to the people who are angry, who are hateful, who are greedy, who are living their lives only for their own self-interest and be a positive focal point for them as well. That is what we need. We need someone to, uh, first of all, unify not only the country, but unify the world. And the only way to do that is to do it by example. So in that respect, each of us can be that positive focus. And if all of us individually are the positive focus, to combine all of that, that we could be the hero that society needs today. Well, I was going to say, I've always been a firm believer that we start with our own corner of the world. Uh, none of us have it within us to save the entire world. We, we oh, Not alone, no. But we can save the corner of our world that we're in. We can do something to make things brighter and better. Um, during the pandemic, I've heard stories about kids that were raising money to buy pizzas for uh, hospital workers. And I was hearing stories about um, neighbors, you know, kids going and talking to their neighbors saying, hey, I, I know you're elderly and you're afraid to go out. 
and you're worried, what can I buy for you? What do you need from the grocery store? And you haven't got your social security check this week yet, so don't worry, I'll take care of it for you. It's only a couple bucks, I'll take care of it. Little things like that, little kindnesses can mean so much. And all we have to do is just reach out to that one person and then they reach out to someone else and then that person reaches out to someone else. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of the TV series Quantum Leap. And I loved it in the last episode when uh, Bruce Miguel's characters, depending on who you're talking about, is either God or the bartender, talks to Sam Beckett about, don't you understand, you touched one life, but that life touched another life, and that life touched another life. That's a ripple effect. You can have a bad day and go out there and say, Elliot has done something to me, and I, I'm ticked off at him, I'm going to yell at him and just scream and be a, a jackass, and then he's going to go talk to the next person that way, and they're going to do the same thing, but I could come back and be nice, and then he carries that over. It's, it's like the little cliche thing about the, about smiling, smiling at somebody, and it's contagious. Other people start smiling at each other. Paying it forward. Yeah. Elliot had to leave us. I was going to call on him next, but since he's gone, I'm going to call on Brian. So, Brian, brother, what do you got? Well, Jeffrey mentioned the word example. And right now, as hooked up as we are with social media, it's become – a very unpleasant place to be sometimes, which is why a lot of us enjoy the celebration and that it's almost an oasis from the general nuttiness of the world. Um, when I was young, I learned a, um, a, um, a phrase, if you will, was noblesse oblige. And it was basically, if you have a lot, you have an obligation to share it with others, to help others with your gift. And I think that's why we need a Superman right now, someone who has incredible, um, call it what you will these days, whatever you know the current the, you know the current speak is about uh, whether it's privilege or power or wealth or information that um, we need somebody to set a good example, someone who has advantages and uses them for the benefit of others. You know, we talk about, say, a Bill Gates, who, um, just like Andrew Carnegie, uh, you know, about a century ago, had amassed this amazing amount of wealth and then spent virtually every waking minute, you know, despite how they may have accrued it, they spent the time giving it away to other people who needed that more. And I think we need a lot more people who are not saddled with their particular agenda and trying to convert others to the way of thinking. You know, I think we need a lot more sharing and finding common ground rather than pummeling someone um, that you may not have a complete lockstep with. And I, you know, I just think that we need somebody like that. I wrote a book, and I'm not going to plug it because that's not what this place is for. But uh, my favorite line in the whole book was where this hero had had taken every, everything taken away from him. And he has an opportunity to prove himself to one of the most powerful men in the world at the time. And they, the person asked him, said, why are you doing this? You are, you know, you're in a totally disadvantaged situation. Why are you trying to help people? And without hesitation, he said... I'm doing it because it's the right thing to do. And I got that from a Superman story. And, um, you know, I think it's a message that I think a lot of us, um, I think it resonates with a lot of people here. And I, I would like to see that message resonate with a lot more people that uh, maybe those who have will share and lift everyone up at the same time in doing so. I think you know a good idea also about finding common ground. There's so many things, there's so many people out there today. In fact, a friend of mine, a friend of mine even posted something on his Facebook page talking about how if you don't agree with this and just unfriend me now, and I'm like, you want me to unfriend you over one thing we don't agree on? Mm -hmm. What about the 99 things that we do agree on? Um, for folks who for folks who aren't friends with me on Facebook, I I have a very strict no politics policy and I, I've, I've, been, I've, been, I've actually been called out recently about not 
discussing certain things that have happened in the real world, and I think that's not my place to talk to comment. I just write comic books. What I like to do is offer a geeky oasis for people to come to and be able to forget about what's going on in the world. I want you to be able to come there and have a good time. And that's my job is to entertain you. At the same time, too, I'm also running my own little social experiment. I, I have people that are on the far left and the far right that would be at each other's throats in other places, but they're talking about comic books they love, movies they love. We don't talk politics. And I'm, I have to admit, I sit back and I laugh because I'm thinking to myself, you guys would hate each other normally, but now you're best friends because you found common ground. You find that common ground. You find something you can agree on, and you build on that. You find one thing, then you find a second thing, then you find a third thing, and you start to realize the more we have in common, the more we're going to find we have fewer things to argue about. That's what we need to do. We need to find that common ground. We need to understand also we're in this together. <laughs> I think that's what Superman understands. Superman gets the whole idea that if the world goes to hell, it's going to hell with him in it as well. And that's what we have to understand. We're, we're in this fight together. Again, that's just me. Did, did Elliot come back yet? Or? Yeah, yes. Oh, cool, cool. Elliot, uh, <laughs> what, what's your take? Well, I agree with all you guys. Listen, I, I, anybody familiar with Quora? So mm -hmm. a, a very elaborate question and answer yeah. website. And somebody asked me once, I've written a lot of stuff on it, not lately, but a lot. Um, somebody asked me what Superman would do if he lived in the real world. And I said, he kind of does. What he would do, the things he can do of all those things, um, the least useful to us, is capping volcanoes and picking up bad guys and throwing them in the in jail and you know catching falling buildings or whatever that's the least useful thing he can do the most useful thing he can do is make us look at him um he published comic books he he you know he'd make movies and television shows um he'd present the possibilities in the world i mean it, People, Brian, you, you, you quoted yourself there. Um, people are always quoting lines from, from uh, Last Son of Krypton to me. And there's one nobody's noticed that I really like a lot. It's, um, if, if he didn't really exist, a frustrated American imagination would have to invent him. That's my favorite line from that book. Um, and it's incredibly true, I think. I think the world we live in is the world he lives in. And to whatever extent he can be a role model for us, um, that's the most useful thing we can get from his existence. Um, to the degree that he's not a role model, to the degree that he becomes dark and brooding, <laughs> it just makes me crazy because it just doesn't fit. Um, I tell people if, if you can if you can come up with a plot and fit Iron Man into it or somebody else, it's not a Superman story. It's it's a unitary character. It's a he um, he's a pure element, uh, like an elemental. Only there isn't an element he's just, he's assigned to. Um, so that's 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 where he lives. He lives in our souls, as you if you will. That's why it's important to me. That's why it's important for us to have him around. That's all. I think that's one of the great things about the character is that it is a character that speaks to a lot of people on so many different levels. Um, if you're an immigrant coming to the United States for the first time, you're Superman. If you've come here uh, seeking a better life or seeking an escape from destruction, you're Superman. If you're anyone who tries to see the good in people, you're Superman. If you're somebody who believes in fighting the good fight and believes in fair play and justice, for the other guy as well as for yourself, you're Superman. 
there's so many things that just touch on so many basic things. Someone forgot to have lunch. I was going to say the same thing. It wasn't me. So. Ran away when dinner showed up. <laughs> oh, I think that was a motorcycle. So, Dan, I, I know you're, um, you're pretty strict about your nail politics role, but I, I'm going to have to disagree with you there. I think uh, politics and comics are pretty intertwined. Since uh, Superman's taken on the Klan, he would he waded into and like you posted about that. He waded into World War II before the U.S. was in World War II. He Superman actually was one of the reasons the U.S. Um, people got behind getting into World War II and Superman was used as pro World War II propaganda. For sure. And when I say propaganda in this case, it's kind of a good thing because he helped encourage the people to support the troops. And Superman himself has always been a voice for social justice. I know it's a dirty word now, but Superman, like there's been panels that people have shared of Superman talking about if anyone's speaking out or speaking against, or I forget exactly what it was, but there it was like a, I think it was a public service message check. So it was like, if you see anyone saying anything, against someone because of their race or gender, that person's, um, you know, there's something wrong with that person. But I think Superman is so powerful, but he speaks out for those without a voice. And he stands up for those without a voice. And nowadays, that's their political and that's their social justice, but that's something that Big Superman, or that's something that's at the very element of who Superman is, because he's always, back in the 30s, he was standing up for Lois. Not that she really, like, she punched those guys, but Action Comics number one, Lois Lane was getting harassed by men, and as Clark Kent, he tried to step in and rescue her, and then a Superman, he did rescue her, like, the iconic him stopping the car with those guys who were trying to, like, basically kidnap her. He's always stood up for those who needed it and always stood up for women who were being harassed, for people who were being harassed because of their way. He was punching Nazis in World War II. He was, he went up against the Klan. So I think, I think it's hard to separate politics from comics too much. Like, yeah, Superman is not going to come out and say, oh, Democrats and it kind of sounds that it, the politics are the politics of who has the right to live, who has the right to equal rights, and people make that political, it shouldn't be. And I think that's why we need Superman, as much as we need him, because he held us every single person has value. Every single person needs to make justice for every single person, and I think he... You know, people who pay attention, like I think all of you do, get inspired by them and can follow his example. And that's really important. That's why we need him. Well, I was going to say, when I talk about not having politics on my wall, what I'm saying is someone who goes in there going, you don't vote Republican, then, you know, you're just a so and so. If you don't vote Democrat, <laughs> you're just. <laughs> There's there's a difference between political norms and human values. Right. Superman always stands up for human values in, in whatever context he finds himself. And if people interpret that as political, well, live with it. 
I look I look at it this way. Superman is not going to save somebody from a falling building and before landing go, hey, how did you vote in the last election? You voted for that guy? Crap, yeah. No, it's Superman doesn't do that. question in this country, ever, in anything. <laughs> And, and again, talking about the human value thing, uh, there, there's, there's, like I said, there's a difference in getting into a, an argument about why that side sucks or this side sucks and getting into a debate about why this is wrong and that's wrong. And that's going back to the whole discord that I think a lot of people have. A lot of people seem to think you have to be one thing or another, and you can never meet in the middle somewhere. You can never find that common ground. Um, the idea that we're all created equal, the idea that women should have the same rights as men, the idea that every person should have the same opportunity that the next guy has, or that you should have the ability to succeed based on your God-given gifts, your pure moxie, how much you're willing to put into the world, that is what should matter to people. How you vote should not be an issue. How you dis who who you support, or maybe may not necessarily who you support, but the idea that you label yourself. People are people are more than just labels. People are a combination of so many different things, and we have to again. It's, again, it's that finding that common ground. Find that one thing you can agree on, and build on that. Don't look for that one thing that's going to tear you apart and drift away. Because I've seen so many friendships that have ended like that. I've seen so many people that have just said, "I'm walking away from this person," and I'm like. That's what Superman wouldn't do. Superman would never walk away from somebody. Even Lex Luthor, even a man who wants to kill him at heart, this is somebody who used to be his friend. This is somebody who used to be somebody he loved as a brother. And I think even to his dying day, Superman would still try to say, I don't like Luthor. Of course he would. Yeah. Luthor's my favorite character. Yeah. <laughs> Well, again, again, Lex, Lex is one of those classic villains. Lex never sees himself as the bad guy. He does not see, he's not sitting around going, I'm evil as can be. It's like, no, he thinks he's the good guy. Yeah, he's not Iago. Iago's different. Exactly. Lex is, is the hero of his own story. Yeah. Well, I mean, Superman's a great example of, you know, no matter who you are, no matter how nice you are, you're, you're the villain in somebody's story. And for Lex Luthor, Superman's the villain in his story. What about everybody else? Uh, everybody else, what do you guys think about this? Any other thoughts? And unmute your mics. We're just talking. We'll watch you. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, just listening. And, you know, lately I've been wondering how did I get interested in Superman, Superboy, et cetera. And it seemed like everything was like the gimmicks. And to solve this po you know, question, you know, how does, you know, Lois Lane, you know, how does Lois, how does uh, Superman get away from Lois Lane discovering his secret identity? And that's what, you know, it's like a, a puzzle. And you're interested in reading the comic book because you see, you know, there's a puzzle to answer. And you know Superman's going to answer it. Superman, Superboy, whatever, is going to answer it. And Superman, Superboy has plans, and his plans, you know, is, is so, you know, Superman's so smart, he makes plans to get out of the situation, he will change everything, and, you know, why is this silver kryptonite, you know, attacking me? And the main problem also comes out to be, you know, he has the definitive everlasting problem of the you know good and evil which ties in my favorite motto in a superman comic book uh superman thinks he's dying he uses his x-ray vision and puts a motto on the moon that says you know if if everyone you know does good then they are superman signed clark kent superman so he had to race it and he got better. But that to me is like the best, uh, to me it's the epitome of what a Superman is, is do good and every man can be, a, you know, man or woman can be a Superman. I, I think also, I think one of the great things about Superman, and this is something I was, I was kidding with Kelly about this earlier, 
um, about when you're a kid, you have these power fantasies about, well, if I was Superman, what could I do? You know, all the, all the stuff I could do in the world. And most people would probably think, well, if I was invulnerable and I could fly and nobody could stop me, I mean, what would I do with those powers? And in no time do you ever see Superman have those kind of thoughts. He's never about, well, you know, I could take over this planet. It's a, it's a nice little place. I could take it over. I can do anything I want. It's always about, you know, a kid needs a saving from a tree or an old lady needs helping across the street. And I think <laughs> that's kind of a thing. It, it kind of goes back to what Brian was saying before. If you see somebody who's got all the wealth in the world or all this power, and yet they're looking for ways to help people, I think that's one of the greatest inspirations of all. It, it, it's, a co it's a combination of somebody who has absolutely nothing willing to give everything they still have in connection with somebody who has absolutely everything to lose, still willing to put on the line because it's the right thing to do. Yeah. It, and again, it really all kind of goes back to this whole thing about just are you willing to lend a helping hand to your to um, to your brother? I I, um, I I like I said I I was raised Southern Baptist. I'm a firm believer that every man is my brother, every woman is my sister. That we're here to help each other out, and if we don't if we don't help each other out, then we're we're going to be lost. It's a bit old-fashioned, I know, but uh, I'm, I'm a bit old-fashioned myself, so. Well, Dan, uh, I was going to say, I'm right there with you. I mean, I, I too, have been raised Southern Baptist, and um, I don't want to go too far down this road, but it is kind of amazing to see a lot of those, especially that have a greater voice and, and a share of the media that profess faith, but then don't don't act as if, you know, they follow Christ. Um, but, and actually you and, and Jeff both kind of hit on uh, some similar points. Um, but I was going to say, I think one of the, one of the greatest things, especially fairly recently, uh, one of the greatest powers that Superman portrays is, is just listening yeah. uh, and understanding, um, you know, Everybody may have, you know has a different story, but that doesn't make anyone more val more or less valid than the other. Um, and kind of like you were saying, with us all being you know in it together, then then it's it makes it that much more important to learn from those different experiences to see how we can improve things instead of focusing on well, this is the difference and trying to find problems with it. Can I? Would it be all right if I shared a personal story? With everybody. Oh, yeah, <laughs> sure. My, like I said, I, like I said, I was born in the South. Um, born, born and raised in Greensboro, North Carolina. I, I'm very, I'm very proud of being from Greensboro. Uh, for folks who don't know it, the um, 1960 uh, World War sit-in took place there. It was the first, one of the first peaceful civil rights uh, protests in the United States. No violence, no harm done, and a lot of change was made. And I, I'm very proud of the fact that Greensboro was a shining example for the South that, yes, racial change can come. Civil rights can come to the South, and it doesn't have to be bloody. It doesn't have to be violent. My parents, my dad especially, growing up in the 70s in the South, certain words were tossed around. But my dad was very quick tell people he knew, you don't talk like that. You don't call that man that. You do not say that to him. You do not yes. say it behind his back. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my I Lord. I found out why after he died. My mom told me that he served in World War II, and my dad never talked about the war. My mom said that there would be times that he would wake up in the middle of the night from nightmares, though. The only time he ever talked about it was is he, he talked about this time when him and his troop were out uh, and they were getting ready to take what they thought was a German base. Scouts went out, came back and said, um, it's not a base, it's a fenced in building. It looks like a complex. There are no soldiers around. We didn't meet any resistance whatsoever. It was one of the first concentration camps that had been liberated. 
And my dad said that he was lucky. He was told sweep the building and look for soldiers inside the barracks. A couple of his friends weren't so lucky. They were the ones that found the mass graves in the back. And a couple more friends were the ones that found the ovens. My dad, who had been raised in the hills of North Carolina, got a firsthand experience at the sheer ugliness. What happens when brother turns against brother, when man turns against man, and the sheer ugliness is allowed to be released? He never forgot that. That's why he raised his kids to respect everyone that they met, to try to be kind to everyone. Because he knew when we forget our own humanity, we damn ourselves and we damn each other. I was very lucky. I, I was lucky like Superman was. I had, a, I had a hell of a dad. And he taught me well. I'm very proud of him. And, uh, anyway, that's, that's my story. That's Good story. Thank you. Very, very cool. I have a friend who had a father in one of those platoons that uh, first found the camps, and uh, it practically destroyed him. He, he was uh, utterly incapable of, uh, when, he, when he came home from the war, he was utterly incapable uh, of being assertive in any way for the rest of his life. He, he made him, turned him completely passive. My dad, I, like I said, my, my dad, I think he was part of that generation that felt like they had to move on. But again, he held so much in and there was so much, and again, mm -hmm. my mom said he never talked about it except that one time. And she said that they, they found people that were starving. They could, they couldn't, they were trying to offer anything. I mean, they had guys who were offering their, their rations, candy. They couldn't even hold water down. And the guys were just there and they were just like, wanting to do anything they could to try to help them. And they knew there wasn't anything except just to be there. And yeah, like I said, again, facing that was the thing that changed his life, I think. Um, not quite on that scope, but, um, a quick backstory. Uh, unfortunately, I never not I never got to know my paternal grandfather. He died about three months before I was born. But uh, he was, uh, and and again, I, I was born in Arkansas, raised in Texas. Um, our uh, most of my family's still from Arkansas. But a um, little bit of backstory on my on my paternal grandfather. Um, his dad died when he was about seven years old and they moved to Dice, uh, Dice Colony. Um, matter of fact, apparently right across the ravine from, uh, Johnny Cash's family. Um, and I don't know how much anybody knows about Dice Colony, but I mean, you, you were essentially sharecropping dirt. Um, they were some of the poorest of the poor. Uh, and so, you know, grandpa knew what it was like to be looked down upon and, and uh, he was born in 27 and, and so just kind of growing up through the depression and um so you know world war ii offered a bit of an opportunity um he he lied about his age and got into the navy and then uh after world war ii served in the army um but uh you know especially raising my dad through the 60s and seeing you know a lot of the uh, the uh, the civil rights movement then and Grandpa just always took kind of a unique, uh, or at least from what my dad has always told me, you know, Grandpa took a unique uh, kind of viewpoint on um, just other people in general, um, and especially during, you know, during the Civil Rights Movement uh, of, the, of the 1960s, you know, I'm sure they, they had a few different conversations, but I mean, you know, one of the things that uh, uh, I remember my dad saying you know, he was like, you know, honest to God, he was like, I, you know, he's like, it's like if we're, fair, if we're sharing the foxhole, I don't care what color he is so long as he's shooting in the right direction. Yeah. Um, but even after retirement, I mean, you know, they, they would talk some and, you know, I, I know grandpa would, would kind of be thinking back on a lot of his times and, and 
you know, especially back to World War II and thinking about how young he was when he got, you know, when he got in and thinking about how young the guys on the other side would have been and, and re the various reasons they would have been in. And, you know, it's just, uh, you know, I always kind of got the impression that Grandpa, you know, found, you know, a lot of the things that we as just a human race choose to get upset about and, 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 you know, separate ourselves over is, is just kind of silly, uh, or not silly, but just unfortunate. Um, and I, and again, I think that's why it's kind of been, or it's why it's so important to, you know, put, um, put ego aside and just sit down and really, you know, really listen. And I know that's something I, I've had to learn the hard way um, as a teacher. Um, you know, I've got various, you know, friends of, of various ethnicities and backgrounds, uh, former students who've become friends and even current students. Mm. And, you know, when you get that up close and you get to see, uh, you really get to see someone else's life intimately and the things that they're having to deal with and a lot of the things they can't control. Um, it just, it paints a very different picture. Um. Uh, and, and I just, I mean, again, I, I think, you know, listening and, and trying to come to some form of understanding uh, would really serve all of us in the long run. I think, I think you're right. I think it's just all about willing to listen to people, willing to listen. Because it is like, it's like the old saying is, we don't know what struggles people are going through. We don't know what people are going through in their lives. And Thank you, listening. Uh, Dan, speaking of listening, let Kelsey speak. Oh, I was going to say, I, I saw Kelsey's hand go up. I was going to say, if Kelsey wanted to say something, I, I, I unmuted the mic, so. Wait. Cool. I was waiting okay. for Dan to finish. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. That's fine. Yeah. Um, so I have uh, a personal story to share as well about the reason that I need Superman. But I need, I need a very specific Superman right now. Uh, I need Action Comics number one and two Superman, who takes down corrupt politicians, who saw a person who was part of the military industrial complex and picked him up and dropped him into a war zone where he was being shot at to be like, look, this is what you're funding. Is this acceptable to you? Like, these are the consequences of your actions, not kind of nicely saying, let's all get along, but sort of really not be saying, I have the ability to be bulletproof and I have this power and I'm going to use that to take action. And like aggressive action, like picking someone up by their shirt collars and dropping them into a war zone and saying like, this is what your company is doing and this is what you're lobbying for politically. And these are the consequences. People are dying and I'm going to force you to look at it. Like that's, that's a very firm and aggressive stance. And that's what I need right now because uh, I'm a transgender American and I haven't, this is the first thing I've come to this weekend because I've been devastated all weekend and grappling with my government right now, trying to make it legal for people to discriminate against me. Saying, hey, if your doctor says, sees that you're trans, they can decline to treat you. And that's fine. We're okay with that. That, that's, that you don't have a legal recourse against that anymore um, because that's overstepping. And so I've been kind of in a pretty upset all weekend and haven't really had the ability to come celebrate with you all because I've been too upset. And like, I need right now that Action Comics number one Superman who would use his pen as Clark Kent as a journalist to all across the front page be like, this is evil and this is unacceptable for these reasons. And I have this power of this voice as a journalist and as Superman to force people to confront the consequences of their actions and to take that aggressive stance, not to say, well, maybe the people who are impacted by this should try to be kinder and listen to the people who are harming them, but to confront the people doing harm in that aggressive, 
um, action oriented fashion. I think that's what, I mean, it's action comics, right? To be, to, Superman has a bias towards action. He doesn't sit by and do nothing when he sees injustice occurring. He doesn't pause and go, well, like, may, you know, no, he takes action. He does something. He doesn't sit on his hands for fear of offending people or like losing like friendships or be or to do things that will make people comfortable he has at certain points because superman is a reflection of our current politic and he's gotten in certain eras more i'm just gonna smile and rescue kittens from trees instead of advocating for people who don't have a voice and i'm not interested in that superman like that i'm interested in the superman who sees injustice and has a bias towards action to do something about it and i think that's what we need right now um, that's what I need right now. I need that Superman very badly. Can I just answer a part of what you said, Kelsey? Uh, you said that you were so too upset to join in because of what's going on and you're not being listened to and, and just the whole situation that you're dealing with. May I just say, I don't, I'm, I can only definitely speak for me. I would like to think that uh, my feeling is reflected by everyone, but everyone who coordinates and is a part of the Superman celebration is sympathetic and supportive. And this is a place to come to as an oasis against everything that is going on in the real world. And that this is a place where you could feel safe and comfortable and supported and included. So I just wanted to throw that out there that this is a place where we have a common icon, as it were. And whatever version of that comic icon is important to you right now is a part of the entire icon that we cherish with our hearts. So I just want you to know that we feel that you are included and a part of us. So welcome. To kind of build on what Jeff said, you're, you, what you've got are people that have been taught by our Superman to be accepting and understanding and to be empathetic um, towards what you're going through. And like I said, I, I, know, it's, I know it's tough and I, I, I understand, but I want you to know you're amongst friends here. You've got people here that care about you, that like you, and you have raised your voice to them right now. And every person who heard you is going to be thinking about what you said, and that's going to impact them. Maybe you even change some. Maybe you even change some opinions. And that's a very powerful thing. I guess the main thing is I just want you to know that, you know. I've just met you, but I consider you my friend. Because, hey, you're a Superman fan. That's enough for me, man. That's, that's, that's good enough for me. I, I appreciate that. I think part of what makes it stressful is because so many times, and I think this is maybe a thing for, for folks to think about, is I've had people who have said those things to me, but then, you know, you talked earlier about it doesn't matter who you vote for. Um, I've had friends who've said those things to me and then turned around and voted for a politician that supports bills that take away my rights and freedoms. And yeah. so there's like a contradiction there, right? Like there's the saying like, oh, we can, it shouldn't matter who you vote for, we can all be friends, but how can you call yourself my friend if the actions you take politically harm me in the people you support, right? Like that I, I can't reconcile those things. And also when I sometimes get told when I talk about things like this, well, this isn't a place for politics. You're being political. And I'm like, no, I'm talking about my existence. And so I would 
encourage people who maybe feel to, to redefine their def to recalibrate their definition of politics, right? Um, you know, there's a difference between the, the, you know, what someone's identity and lived experiences and how the political machine impacts that in a real way versus like your coffee preference, you know? Um, and yeah, so it, uh, I appreciate the, the vote of like, we're all friends here, but like, I, I know people here in the Superman family who have voted for politicians that are actively trying to harm me. Um, so it, it makes it hard to fully buy into and believe that and feel safe because what are you saying to my face versus what are you doing behind the scenes? And, and so that's the example of Superman that I think I would encourage everyone to kind of look to in these times is like a man whose like actions align with his ideology. You know, he doesn't talk out of one side of his mouth and then turn around and do the other. Um, and also thinks through kind of all those nuances to see full people and how his actions have impact. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be brutally honest about something, and I hope I do not offend anybody, but honestly, 90% of the elected officials we have in the country, I'd be all for getting, I'd be all for kicking them out of office because 90% of them are not the politicians we deserve. They're not the elected officials we deserve, I think. Um, you know, they might be the ones we we deserve, but not the ones we want. <laughs> I've, I've, always, I've always been a firm believer. My, my philosophy has always been for President of the United States, go through the phone book of any major city, call people up, and the first person that says, no, I don't want the job. I, I, I couldn't, I'm not, I'm not responsible for it. That's who gets the job. Find the guy who does not want the job. Give it to him or make him take it. <laughs> yeah, I always said, I said the... The best president I can think of is my dad. Yeah. You know. I, I'd, I'd voted for my dad in a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah. But no, Kelsey, I think that it kind of falls on all of us to really look at the people who are going to be leading us. I, I, I know a lot of folks that when they vote, they vote straight party. They never stop and look at who's actually running. It's more important what letters behind their name. And that's on us. We have to be informed as voters. We have to know who we're voting for and what they stand for. So in, in that regard, I agree with you 100%. They need, before you go to the polls, find out who you're voting for. Find out what they stand for. And don't, don't be influenced by any party. Do not let any party influence you. Look at the individual. Look at the person. Look what they stand for. Also look at their record. Have they stood by what they've said? Or is it just lip service? May I? Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, sir. That's okay. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. And after all of that, we're now hearing from Lex Luthor. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I would urge people uh, to do is vote all the way around. Vote for the dog catcher. Vote for your Metropolitan Utilities Board. Vote for all the city, state, and local elections, bring up the people who reflect the values we want to see. Uh, Kelsey, I agree entirely with you about that type of Superman, that type of action character here being needed. And they're all, I live in Omaha, Nebraska right now, and they're all over uh, the down ballot votes in a very conservative, very red state. People who care about all of these issues, who care about, well, truth, justice, and the true American way, inclusion, and empowerment, and giving a hand where a hand is needed. All those people are out there, and we vote for them, we can bring them up. They can get into the state legislature, state government, uh, state mayors, move into uh, Washington and sweep all these idiots out. Because right now, what I see a lot is the people vote somebody in, like, here's the car keys, you got four years, let's see what you can do. And we get a lot of, uh, Malarkey, to borrow a term, uh, from people doing that. And one of the things I've always found interesting in American government, you know, they teach about the branches of government. They teach uh, three branches of government. Uh, there's four. The framers of the Constitution thought it was so mind 
numbingly obvious, they never bothered to mention. It's the people. The people have to refresh the government. The people have to watch the government. They have to rein it in, if necessary, and encourage it where necessary. A lot of times we don't do it. And like my friend Kelsey here, people are getting hurt by this. And we, we all need to be very vigilant. Also, yeah. um, Superman sucks, vote Luther. <laughs> <laughs> we had a president once who kept referring to himself as the sovereign uh, to justify things that he was doing that other people aren't entitled to. And I kept yelling at the television every time we do that, that the sovereign is the people in a democracy. We have a sovereign. It's not you. That's all. Well, I was going to say, I know we're heading over. We're past six o'clock. I know Charlie is coming up. Um, we, we made it straight a little bit on this particular topic, but I think it's one that, um, we got some good out of, I think. And, uh, I do, I do want to thank everybody who joined us for the panel today. Uh, thank you all for the input as well. And the only thing I can say is try to be the light in the world you want, you want to see yourself. Try to be that guiding force if you can. A little bit of kindness, offer hope. Be there for each other. And the icon of Superman is within all of us. Yeah. It's it's like it's like Doral said, um, they only like you know, they only like the light to lead them. They can be a great people when they want to be. We they can like access to the light. Yeah. That's the way it should say. We can we can do some pretty amazing things as human beings. We can be incredibly ugly to each other, we can be hateful as hell. But there are times we can be amazing and we can do profound things. Again, just remember the fight is not ours alone. We're all in it together. Be there for one another. Love each other. One thing that I'm just going to Yeah. Um, one thing I'd like to share that I can is I've been listening while I've been getting ready. And something that always resonates with me when it comes to Superman. Superman represents the best version of ourselves and he's meant to represent the best version of himself he's meant to inspire everybody he's meant to bring everyone to the, to the realization that they can always have learning they can always have growth and they can always become better people you just have to look into it and you have to have hope um, every time i think of a very stressful situation if i can't think of a family member to inspire me i think of what superman and what he would do it's a, as, as Kelsey and many of you have said, uh, he represents a man of action, a man of doing the right thing. So he represents the best in all of us and we all need to be more like him. That's kind of what has Superman has brought to me. The more and more I grew up, the more I realized it's important to be more like Superman if you're gonna bring a hopeful mindset to this world. Anyway, thank you. I was gonna say, Charlie, the only thing I'm gonna say is I apologize for us running over into your time. Uh, we'll let you have as much time as you need. The last thing I'm going to say is um, this is one of the best conversations I've had in a long time. And the great thing about it is nobody yelled, nobody name called, nobody for, cursed. We all came together as rational human beings. This is why we need Superman, because Superman inspires the best of us. I love you guys. So anyway, Kelly, I think we're, I think we're done. I'm just going to thank again everybody who joined us. Uh, Kelly, Jeff, Elliot, Brian. Everyone who um, joined us, uh, thank you again, guys. Thanks for inviting. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. We appreciate it. You guys, take care and enjoy the rest of the show. Do you want to get